So, umorder ako ng graphics card para sa video na ito. Ano, napakagaling kasi ang mahal-mahal. Tapos, kinapukasan, may nagtabas na mas mura. <laughs> Tapos, may naglabas pa. Wala akong makita ko! Hey guys, maraming salamat po sa mga sumaporta sa previous na mga video. So, this is the 3245K PC build video guide tutorial. And we're gonna discuss about the tips and tricks, alternatives, at kung ano yung uh, feel ng market ngayon, tsaka mga experience namin. So, stay tuned. Para magkaroon kayo ng confidence sa pagbili ng mga PC parts ninyo, ito ang pagkakasunod-sunod ng pagdating ng mga items na binili namin sa Shopee at Lazada. True story po yung nasa intro ng video na to. Bumili kami ng GPU sa Lazada and unfortunately may mga lumabas sa Shopee at sa Bearmore PC na mas mura na mga GPU which is inintay ko rin lumabas sa kanila. Unfortunately, hindi agad siya lumabas so napabili kami ng mahal. Kaya kailangan natin tanungin ang mga sarili natin bago tayo bumili ng PC. Mag-a-active research ba tayo to buy parts in RSP in, in lower prices or Okay lang ba sa atin na bumili tayo ngayon ng medyo overpriced pero at least makuha natin agad. So, yun yun dapat tanongin yung purpose ngayon. Pero, pinapakita ko lang tong video na to para alam ninyo sa ngayon kung bibili talaga kayo ngayong month na to. So, moving on sa ating napakamahabang rant. Kung nagtataka kayo kung bakit 30 to 45k yung PC build guide na ito, 45k kung meron kayong GPU at peripherals. Pero kung wala, integrated graphics na which is pag-uusapan natin maya-maya. So, ang didiscuss muna natin is yung binili nating peripherals which is yung Bluetooth adapter or pwedeng Bluetooth Wi-Fi adapter kung gusto ninyo. Nakalan lang kami kaya ito binili namin kasi most motherboards don't have a Bluetooth uh, dongle or Bluetooth inside of them. So, bumili din kami ng fans, which is the case fans, which is the in-win. You can buy much more cheaper fans. Sobrang buji lang kasi talaga tingnan ng in-win. Sobrang unique tingnan. May fan hub na siya. Tapos, meron din kas kasi kaming stock. Kaya, yan yung pinili namin. Pero, mas makamura pa kayo dun sa 30 to 45 cable din nyo kung uh, mas murang fancy bibilhin ninyo like dark flash, rock, at saka deep cool and may sale ngayon sa ECPC ng mga fans kung i-check ninyo marami kay makakatipid talaga kayo marami kayo pagpipilian bago kayo bumili ng fans, tingnan ninyo kung ARGB or RGB at tingnan ninyo kung 3-pin or 4-pin at kung tugma ba sa motherboard ninyo para hindi kayo magkalituhan ano yung dapat ninyong bilhin one of the last peripherals we bought is the Razer Viper Mini, which is one of the highest rated lightweight mice out there. You have to check with your seller sa shop your Lazada kasi napaka dami pong fake na Razer products there. You have to check your grip, ano mouse kits yung gusto nyo. You also have to sukatin yung kamay mo, char. So, you have to know what your preference is because not every good mice is for everyone. Ginawa namin ng video na to para hindi kayo magkamali in the future and unfortunately sa pagbili namin ng CPU cooler na to parang may mistake kami kasi although maganda yung mga deep cool products na nabili namin in the past, para kasi lagi siyang may catch. So for instance, bibili kami ng deep cool, ang ganda, tas biglang may masikip yung screw, may kulang. Dito naman sa deep cool na to na binili namin, same product ka masikip yung pagkapit ng fan sa heatsink. Dati kasi hindi. So, parang meron siyang inconsistency with productions. Unlike with our usual preference, which is ID cooling. Okay siya, perfect, malambot. No problem at all. Parang yun lang yung naging problem namin. Pero mamaya-maya lamang magdi-discuss din kami ng mga iba-ibang alternative. So, katulad nitong motherboard na to, ang napagpilian namin is either yung Steel Legend ng ASRock or ito nga Mortar Max. Which is ito yung napili namin kasi may USB-C, yung layout niya, and then familiar na rin kasi ako sa BIOS. Tsaka since MSI na din ako, naka-ITX naka lang ako. And with this build naman, maganda siya kasi naka-bundle. So, yun yung tip ko rin. Mostly... Ngayon, sa mga Shopee or Lazada stores, mas mura kapag nakabundle. So, yun lang yung tip ko. Even sa mga Facebook marketplaces, they tend to sell it like that kasi para siguro makakita sila agad. So, sa sure buy. And then, dito naman sa ano, dito naman sa motherboard na ito, so far, yung naging 
kumbaga pagkukulang lang din naman namin yun is parang medyo iba siya dun sa mga previous namin mga motherboard ng pinipili. So, merong mga bagay lang na like walang label. So, tingin-tingin lang tayo palagi sa mga manual. So, yun. So, ito yung kasama niya na Ryzen 53600. So, swerte na kami kasi nakita kami na 3600 with bundles kasi nagkakaubusan na siya. So, may pro tip naman here. Kung gusto nyo makamura, it's either bibili kayo ng Ryzen na tray version which is at least 3 to 4K yung mura niya. Um, less nga lang yung years ng warranty. Or itong may rate cooler kasi it's either yung walang uh, fan or merong fan. So, I-discuss ko rin mamaya kung bakit worth it yung integrated graphics. Kung wala kayong GPU, bili kayo ng CPU na ganyan na may integrated graphics. Isa na rin sa mga rason is once na masira yung current GPU nyo ngayon, mahal po bumili ng GPU so at least meron kayong fail safe. Pagdating naman sa PC cases, marami namang mura so sky's the limit pwede kayong pumili ng iba pa. Para po sa mga hindi nakakaalam, ganito po maglabas ng case. So, may instructions po yun kung paano ilabas. Meron lang akong nakikita mga nababasag yung mga case nila kasi hindi sila maalam maglabas ng kanilang mga cases. So, we chose naman this Deep Cool Macube 110. Pinagpilihan namin either the Cooler Master 1 or ito. The deciding factor for this is yung flush design niya. Kita niya flat na flat siya. It's, uh, it's a clean white. Hindi siya yung dirty white tapos ang hindi lang namin nagustuhan dito is yung exposed na IO cables niya dun sa may malapit sa power so walang measure anything nagko cover and also ang maganda sa case na to is ang sturdy niya maganda yung rubber fit niya yung iba kasi parang plastic lang so okay tong build na to okay tong uh, PC case na to and What I like most of it is mura siya, like compared dun sa mga alternative niya. So, with the RAM naman, I think I've discussed last time na RAM prices have ramped up. Sobrang nagmahal siya. So, we had to wait talaga. So, itong Course Air Vengeance naman yung tiningnan namin. I think ito yung pinakamura as of now and worth it sa performance per dollar. So, nakita namin yung benchmarks. Ah, ang RAM naman usually pare-pareho lang naman. So, ang problema nito sa iba, walang RGB. So, kung gusto mo naman RGB, pili ka na iba. Like, crucial pero mas mahal siya by 1K or 2K. So, nasa yun na yun. Regarding naman with the power supply is the FSP Hyper K which is really reliable and the reviews are really good. Uh, recommended by Bermar PC. And regarding naman sa storage, so, bumili kami ng 3D NAND, not actually uh, uh, SATA versus uh, NVMe. I think we'd go with SATA pa rin kasi ang mahal talaga nung tinaas ng presyo ng NVMe so it's not actually worth it kasi although I would compare the speed with the benchmark, halimbawa maglo-launch ka ng game, mas mabilis siya ng 10 to 20 seconds, ganyan, pero hindi pa rin worth it sa price at the moment. I think if ano, mag-wait ka, pero mas worth it siya ngayon kung agad-agad kang bibili this month. So, we're gonna move on with the PC building itself. So, I'm gonna work on this narration na parang podcast style. I think one of the best things to know ngayong pandemic is what should I buy or what should I Where should I put my money optimally? And ayan, dito sa video na to. So, my girlfriend, na, which is kanya tong PC na to, she's, uh, she, this build, purpose nito is for just light photo editing and motion effects. Just that. It will suffice and ask yourself questions like, will I use multiple programs at the same time? So, I should buy more RAM. So, kailangan may balance sa uh, usage mo. Naglalagay siya ngayon ng CPU, so you have to align the pins and the gold triangle dun sa motherboard indication. So, ito sa mga tip pag nagbibuild ng PC, you have to pay attention sa layout ng motherboard mo. If you have your P, uh, if you have your motherboard, tingnan mo yung layout niya before dumating yung board. Minsan sa mga websites, you can check out 
Search up nyo sa Google, tapos i-type nyo lang ang motherboard model nyo. Makikita nyo yun doon yung specs, yung gallery, even yung manual. Like, you can even check in advance for everything kasi everything is online now. You can find these parts. Halimbawa, ito. Ito sa video na to, may nakalistang parts. So, pagpalagay natin na nakita mo itong video na to sa YouTube and ito yung lumabas kasi gusto mo itong mga parts na to. This is actually a good practice when building a PC is always check for if there are existing builds already para merong kang reliable source when building it. So, itong video na to, ang purpose ko is, again, para malaman niyo kung ano yung condition or atmosphere ng market ngayon. Ang parts naman, regarding sa parts noon, nakakatanggap kami ng parang mga weird na parts na parang may kulang or parang kumbaga may mga sira. Ngayon sa panahon na to, parang wala naman na kami natatanggap na ganun. Wala kaming na-refund ngayon. So, it's a great blessing. And then, itong ano naman, ang naging problema lang namin dito sa cooler na to, kung nakikita niyo sa screen, is itong fan na to, sobrang sikip niya. So, tin I've, uh, whenever you uh, have your parts, try to test it out first. So, ilapat mo muna kung tama ba. So, yung screws ba, wala ba siyang mga loose thread. So, ganun yung ano, pag nagsya-check ka ng mga PC parts. And then, always, always, uh, don't forget the thermal cooler. Uh, the thermal paste sa uh, iyong cooler. Kasi, some CPU coolers don't have the pre-applied, a free packet ng a thermal paste. Mura lang man siya. Pwede ka rin humingi sa mga kapitbahay. Minsan, nagtanong din ako kung meron sa mga kapitbahay kasi marami namang taong may thermal paste na nag-existing ngayon. Pero maganda is bago para fresh na fresh. Ano? Next is naman is sa RAM. So, dito sa motherboard na to, you have to place the RAM in the DIMM 2A and DIMM 2B. So, that's the optimal way. Sabi ng motherboard, when you boot up, yun yung, uh, nung nag-try lang kami mag-tinker out, yun yung sabi ni motherboard sa boot sa BIOS. And then, kapag uh, bibili kayo ng parts, always assume na baka may sira. So, please keep the receipts. Always pag order kayo online, huwag nyo i-order received agad or huwag nyo i-claim na okay na yung all, uh, orders. Kasi minsan nagkakaroon siya ng problema after, let's say, the boot or after a week. So, yon Kailangan maging alisto kayo sa mga information na yon So, regarding naman sa GPU, again, ito yung isa sa mga kailangan na pag-usapan is worth it ba bumili ng mga second hand na GPU? Um, according kay Linus sa isang video na, na which, nag, uh, which is nag-benchmark siya ng mga GPU na ginamit sa mining, merong specs na same, uh, merong 4 months minain, merong 2 years and more. Worth it bumili, but there's a catch. Depende yun sa pagbibilhan mo, syempre, depende rin sa conditions. Meron naman kasi mga minamine na kung saan-saan lang nakalagay, hindi nalilinis ng mabuti. Meron namang minamine sa mga gagandang lugar like naka-aircon. So, you have to think kung saan nang gagaling ba yung GPU. Kasi, there is not much deterioration actually dun sa base, dun sa napaka-reliable na benchmark nila. It's actually just, pinipigilan lang ng mga manufacturers bumili. Bumili tayo sa mga miners kasi nga, syempre, mawalan sila na pera. Pero, actually, if you know a good place to buy second hand, why not? Just save money. It's okay. It's your money. I'm just telling you now, if you buy brand new, ano mangyayari? So, I'm only here for that. So, before we continue, I'd like to say thank you for the support and please like, follow, and subscribe for my Loud Mime Gaming Facebook page and the YouTube channel as well as my Twitch. And don't forget to comment down below ano yung sunod na video na gusto nyo makita from this channel. So, you place your CPU on the slot, aligned it to the triangle, you close the tray, naglagay ka ng thermal paste, you place the uh, CPU cooler, and you made sure that you remove the standoff sa motherboard, and all the screws are should be laid out, ilabas mo yung screws ng case mo, and you should place the motherboard on the case. Inside the case, rather. Kasi... 
you would want to pull out your I.O. panel na sa loob ng motherboard uh, box nyo and make sure na you don't push too hard, you don't uh, want to break your motherboard. Bago ka maglagay ng parts inside your case, you have to imagine how would these parts align inside the motherboard. Kasi for instance, uh, although pinakahuli siya, yung GPU, you don't want to pluck out or huwag mong tatanggalin agad yung I.O. panel unless you're extremely sure na na-shoot sa I.O. panel yung uh, input-output ng GPU mo. And then, one of the tedious parts of is the cable management and yung paglagay ng fans and you have to know the optimal temperature may aircon ba yung kwarto mo and does your case have grill sa unahan, sa gilid so there is the standard na again ililink ko sa description but the most important part is what is uh, your setup will you have the ARGB, the RGB because Merong mga motherboards may internal USB. Some motherboards have m cater more to different uh, pins, like 4 pins, 3 pins. And you have to know what to buy. And it has to be compatible kasi you would have the headache of buying headers and different plugs and etc. So, dito din naman sa motherboard. I mean, in this case, eh, Dahil hindi namin dinikit sa motherboard yung SSD because it's not an NVMe. It's just, you have to put a screw doon sa storage and then it will just uh, grip on to the case. So, that is very, actually convenient. One of the greatest things about the case is how convenient it is. Especially if you plan to maybe bring it out and change it for some reason i don't know depends on the workflow mo so that's that always remember that pag tumaas nang tumaas yung specifications and high end uh, parts mo you have to invest more with cooling so you have to think about uh since you would focus more on that i guess it would be better to have a modular power supply, a, a really great power supply instead of the standard uh, non-modular because the higher the specs you have, the higher you should invest on the power supply. Don't forget to check the manual. Lahat ng mga importante na mga information uh, regarding sa build nyo, makikita nyo sa manuals. A lot of people fail to read the manual so uh, they don't want to bother although nandun na lahat kakagatin ka na ng uh, ahas tutuklawin ka na you don't want to check but you should you should bother with it kasi you don't want to make the mistakes that others have done so I want to talk about uh, but before I forget is is the golden age of PC building dead and is mid range uh, PC building dead kasi Again, these parts are so expensive before. Like, if I compare the PC I have now worth 50k versus this PC we are building, like, I could get a 2060 or 2080 nung December, and ngayon, it's so hard to get a decent uh, GPU. I mean, a decent GPU na hindi yung ubusan, hindi yung na pagtirhan ka na, na iisa na lang so you have to beg the question like is it worth it will it be worth my while so uh, again another thing is yung storage nakikita na din natin na medyo nagra-ramp up yung prices ng storage and meron na rin na nagkaka-issues regarding sa reliability dahil nga ng pag-swap out ng at pag-degrade at pag-downgrade ng mga storage devices uh, dahil nga sa shortage and then I think it's worth it na bumili ng mas murang storage because since I mean SATA is still worth it ang ay tingin ko in my opinion if you are a person who uses cloud storage I think it's a much more better option than getting the expensive storage na NVMe 
which also has compatibility issues. Oh, and also don't forget to remove the plastic seals and yung peeling ng mga cases or ng mga parts kasi baka maiwan dun sa uh, loob ng case and baka mag-cost ng sunog. Or, but it, it won't, it won't. Just remember na there's a lot of residue when building parts. With regarding sa boot up, so nagbo-boot na kami dito, always remember kung ano yung kailangan ng GPU mo and also uh, yung tamang placement ng RAM. So, if it does not boot, try to plug your GPU again or yung RAM again and does it need uh, power? Kasi some GPUs uh, plug lang siya, some need the power and some rams kailangan uh, it the uh, eraser trick still works so pwede nyo erase uh, gamitan ng eraser um and then in pcb and then plug it again and it should work most of the time sometimes uh in this case with us is the wrong placement of the power so sa front panel niya so kailangan tingnan niyo na mabuti yung motherboard because if not baka mag-cost tayo ng short so always remember to check the manual check uh, uh, what to do before booting so paano ba mag-install ng windows so installing windows is very easy you just need a usb na at least 4 gig to 8 gig na available and i would leave a link below na full tutorial so you would understand the process pero it's free so the, it's the tool is free pero yung license hindi you can pirate it uh madali lang siya just google it i don't uh i uh i don't want to promote it pero it is possible but, but I, i'm not the one to judge kasi not everyone has the money for it and then with the programs naman uh, I could do a tutorial, maybe, uh, how to download certain programs like Microsoft Office Suite uh, for free. Pero, again, uh, I don't want to promote it. I just I just know how. I, uh, siguro dahil nga na before I was... Uh, I was like this broke kid. So, I know how it feels. Pero, uh, again, it's better to buy license kasi support developers and stuff like that or again alternatively the good thing to do maybe download uh, linux or other linux distros kasi free doon ang mga program so yeah you could always install libreoffice then because it's free so yun yung mga alternatives with booting naman uh, all you have to do is yung first boot nyo, lagi nyong uh, ilalagay yung Windows installer para mag-boot agad. But, in the bias naman, ang gagawin nyo lang naman dyan is to go to overclocking, uh, go to XMP, and then go to profile 1. It will overclock your RAM. And then, check for uh, the bias update. Download the drivers you would need. So, I would leave the description down below some of the information that you need for you to update your bios and also yeah i this is the result this is the pc uh working and its drivers and its games we are testing it and everything and it turned out real good so again so, pag nagbibuild kayo ng PC, always check kung nagana ba yung mga drivers ninyo, nagana ba yung mga USB ports ninyo, may sound ba, nakaka-pag-microphone ba kayo. So, you have to check everything before making sure na it's clear. So, itong mga benchmark na to, yung nauna si ni Bench is for rendering and then I have list of games na you see here na iba-ibang genre so you would check na if they're performing fine and yes they're performing fine and i'm running this with the stock recorder ng windows which is the xbox game bar i believe so yun is the build worth it of course but mga kamura pa ba yes mga kamura pa so again yung option na integrated graphics so Maganda siya na 
isipin na option kasi, again, if nasira nga yung GPU more for some reason, you need to replace it. Well, meron kayong choice na magamit pa rin yung PC ninyo. And you can wait patiently. Bawa, babenta nyo yung GPU nyo. And then, you can wait. You can wait and you wouldn't, uh, kumbaga, hindi kayo mag-worry na, ah, wala akong graphics card, hindi ko magamit ang PC. At least, pag may integrated graphics card, it would work. Tandaan nyo na, although mahal ang mga parts ngayon, hindi kayo nag-iisa. Everyone is struggling from it. And, if you check Reddit threads, Facebook, meron mga tao na they bought 1080 Ti for $500. Some bought uh, 1050 Ti for like uh, 400, even 600 dollars. Like, ganun ka grabe yung ano ngayon. Ganun ka grabe yung prices. So, I would suggest na don't worry and we'll get through it and try to be patient. Pero, if you do really need it, at least meron mga ganitong YouTube tutorials na would be available. And, I'm really glad that ngayon taon, I could provide uh, PC builds every month so you guys can check out if your purchases are worth it and it is it is actually worth it especially if you are going to invest in using it kung gagamitin nyo pero kung hindi nyo naman gagamitin for the sole purpose of uh, what you need eh, wala hindi worth it so yun just make sure na pagbibili kayo ng PC, make sure it's worth it na gagamitin nyo araw-araw. Hindi nyo siya papabayaan because PC building is also all about maintenance. You have to know how to clean. You know how to fix if you have bugs. You have a broken software. You have to know how to fix it kasi if you spend so much money and then di ka naman maalam mag-aalaga or even know how to make your PC function well eh, that's really uh, bad because uh, saying naman yung investment mo because it is an investment there's a lot of things you can do with so much computing power it's business it's school it's gaming it's creating content creation and art and everything so you have to make the most of your money of your build this is your like this is like a body like a car so treat it like uh, with care So, this is what we call fur mark. So, it's a benchmark test in different resolutions. You can check out if your GPU has any stuttering. Maganda din siya if you want to detect like viruses or malware trying to mess up your system. So, it's good if you also have a higher refresh rate monitor to check if something is wrong. So, if it can take a lot of load. So, apparently, naman, okay naman yung sa GPU natin. So that's the end of the video. I hope you liked it and please comment down below kung anong thoughts niyo dun sa PC build and I hope to see you on the next video. And please feel free to contact me on Loud Mime Gaming Facebook or on Twitch. So, babush!